provoked by another woman's malice. She refused to respond in kind. Instead, she poured out her heart in sorrow to God, allowing him to vindicate her. I'm Tammy Becker. Welcome to this week's episode in our 52-week Women of the Bible. We are using Jean E. Saswarta's Bible study book. And this week we are diving deep into the character of Hannah. Now I've done a lot of research on, I mean, I haven't studied Hannah a lot, so this was interesting. It's going to be an interesting week for me, and I was excited to dive into her to Hannah. Uh, when I was researching Hannah, her the research showed me that Hannah's name means graciousness or favor. And this week's scriptures reading that we'll be reading from is from 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1 through chapter 2, that's Samuel chapter 2 verse 2. And also, chapter 2, verse 19 through 21. <laughs> so, before I get started in our reading of the biblical character of Hannah, I would like to remind you to grab your free micro Bible journaling printable and supplies. Make sure you've got all of that ready for our creative time when we do our down view and work through the questions in the workbook together and journal in our creative time together. All of those free, the free printable and whatnot are located. The links are in the description of this channel of this episode. So go ahead and you can pause it or take time to do that. If you're already on our list and receiving them every week, yay for you. All right. Because every week they magically appear inside of your inbox for this series. And if this is your first time with us, your series micro card will start with Eve and with episode one. So that's where you'll start. You'll go back to Eve and just kind of get out of this one. Go back to Eve and get your card and get started with Eve and then work your way through week by week. And that's how it goes in our faith pod as well. So let's go ahead and get started in Hannah's biblical story together. Now, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. I'm going to try Elkanah had two wives, and one was named Hannah, and the other was Peninnah. Now, Peninnah had children, but Hannah had none. So, because the Lord had closed her womb. Now, we've heard this before, right? So, rival kept provoking her in order. I mean, it was, it was irritating her until she wept. Then she wouldn't eat. In bitterness of soul, I love how they put that, in bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. So then we see that Elkanah, Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife. And then we did see that the Lord remembered her. And in the course of time, we saw that Hannah conceived and she did give birth to a son. And she named him Samuel. And she said, said this because I asked for him. So it's, it's interesting as we read about these women, how they intertwine the stories of some of the greatest men of the Bible. In the greatest men of the Bible couldn't have been the greatest men of the Bible without some of the greatest women of the Bible. And that is what the key is about studying the women of the Bible. I don't care how many times you've studied it. God always discerns something a little bit more 
each and every single time that you study, dive a little bit deeper into their story. He always lifts something out of those beautiful pages between those pages and, and, and shares something. So let's get started my creative time together and take a down view and get started on those questions. Okay, as we get started in our down view here, uh, we are working on our micro card, which is 1 Samuel 1-2. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had none. And we'll be going over, I'm going, to, our lesson is going to be based on the questions and again in our workbook of Genesis Sorta, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group and talk about the grouping of the questions. I'm not giving you my answers. I'm just going to kind of have the lesson as we journal together. So really when we start to, as we read in our beginning um, about Hannah, we kind of, uh, we want to set the stage with with Hannah because she was kind of a prayer warrior which is kind of important and so prayer is man's really means of communication with God and the word of God Jesus so which is a, in agreement with the will of the heavenly father 1 John 5 14 and 15 tells us that and when when we pray, God hears us, and if he hears us, then he will grant our petitions and the secrets. The secret of effective prayer, praying, then, is to, is, is to determine the will of God, praying according to his word, and claim the answer by faith. So, I mean, to, uh, all too often... Our prayers are simply those of petition, and much like making a grocery list out and of you know what we want. And but really, prayer also involves intercession and really traveling on behalf of the needs of others. Prayer is one of those weapons that we can use when it comes to spiritual warfare. Just chalking my page because I want to bring out the little uh, this color in our color scheme too because a lot of blues today so I wanted to bring out a different color on my page so I wanted to get the background done here again remember I'm not really teaching you I'm just trying to do our lesson together and just telling you what I do along the way so I had my little washi tape over the verse that we're using today so that it stands out when I chopped. And if you can see it or not, because there's kind of a shadow. But I'll go ahead and probably do a little outline of it. So really the successes of Hannah were really based on 1 Samuel 1, uh, 2 and, 1 and 2, and uh, in two, uh, 1 to 21. I'm going to put this on my opposite page because I'm not going to be using the opposite page. Let's put my micro card. Uh, so Hannah was uh, one of the favorite wives, as we saw of Elkanah, a man who f who followed the common custom of polygamy. Now let's remember this was the custom then. You know we don't follow that custom, or at least not in the United States. We do not follow. Well, most people do not follow that custom in the United States. But uh, it's not a custom that we do. I guess I, I would say that we, we follow. But at that time, 
we're talking about biblical time in this time in the Bible. It was a custom that was followed. And since it was the desire of every Hebrew parent to have a son at that time, it was kind of a reproach to Hannah that she was barren. And she was really provoked by Elkanah's, uh, his other wife, and uh, Elkanah's other wife, Peninnah. And, you know, I hope I'm saying these right. I researched them, but again, with that, the little seizure things that I have and memory and sometimes I forget you know exactly how to pronounce things and I'm sorry about that so I'm apologizing ahead of time but Hannah maintained a constant observance of the religious and ordinance ordinances of her nation so her husband loved her dearly but she she was really unhappy and we see this a lot in these women as we study them they she was unhappy because it seemed like this this was what they you know they really wanted was to be able to have children and it's not the first time that we're seeing this um, in the Bible with with women we've studied this before so she really cried out to God day and night for a child she was wasn't guilty of bitterness or revenge. She knew that God was her only hope. She trusted God for her only hope. And then on one particular occasion, Hannah's supplication was made without speech. Her lips <laughs> were moving. How many times have we done this in our mind? We're talking and our lips are probably moving. I can see this, you know, in my mind. But no sound came forth. And so when Eli the priest saw her praying and thought she was drunk, he embraced her for coming into God's house and thought that she was, thought that she was drunk. <laughs> so, I meant, you know, he he um, he thought she was in a condition. So Hannah was protested her innocence and poured out her soul to Eli, and he replied, "Okay, go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition and that thou hast asked for him." And she went home believing, and her burden was lifted. From God granted her desire, and the and and the yearned for the child. Samuel was born. Here we see Samuel being born, and just kind of placing my stickers around. So Hannah had made a vow unto God: if God would give her a son, she would give him back to the Lord all the days of his life and so God gave her Samuel and she weaned him and she took him to the house of the Lord and there to abide forever and she visited him once a year so Samuel grew up to reflect his mother's godliness even though he was raised by Eli who had been a poor father to his own two sons Hannah and Elkanah were, were blessed with other children but none were the object of as many prayers as Samuel was. I just, gosh, I mean, each and every week when we're studying these women, don't you feel closer to them? Literally, I feel like we're diving into their personal life and their personal stories. And I really take a moment and I really feel like I am there with them and I'm feeling their sorrow and their pain and you can and I sometimes I get emotional because I lost you know I've lost two children in my life and it's it's it is you 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 feel this sadness and that she was feeling and these women were feeling as we go through these stories and I just take it, so, take so much in about these women and what they went through. And it, it, it really, as we study them, it really, really makes them so relatable to us. And the train's going off in the background. <laughs> you could probably hear it. But really, it is really relatable. It, 
by studying them and realizing that these women were just like us and they probably in their life just had so many days in and days out of things going on that we don't even know about. So there's my stickers. And what I'm gonna do now is just add a little bit of, of my glitter glue, let it dry. Because this glitter just comes so pretty when it dries it's just glittery without all the mess of glitter everywhere I just love glitter glue best thing I ever found and I know you see me using it all the time some sometime I'll have to go through my pages but I know sometimes you don't really get to see everything here I got a big shadow on there I'm so sorry about that Some days are darker than others. It depends on the, the cloud and everything going on around. Okay, I think that's about it. Hey guys, wasn't that so much fun? I do hope that you are enjoying these wonderful printables. I know I say that every single week, but I like to give credit where credit's due. And I like to give a shout out to my team behind the scenes, to my digital team, my podcast team, my editing team, everyone that does all the fantastic work that's behind the scenes for all of you to enjoy everything. But they can't do their job without being paid. And we are a nonprofit. So Really, if you just join our Faith Pod, $5 a month, or our Mini Pod, $10 a month, all of those funds go to help pay for the families behind the scenes incomes. So please do that. Check us out at www.youministries.com and become part of the bigger picture. We are a nonprofit organization. So everything that you get in those pods is tax deductible for you. So come on over and take a deeper dive into these women. Learn more about their story, their legacy in prayer, their legacy in scripture, as we take a deeper dive into those pages together over there on our website. And don't forget to check out our Almighty God and Gospel Girl podcast. We have it right here on YouTube, or you can join, you can check it out on Anchor or any of your favorite platforms. And I would like it so much if you would subscribe to our channel and hit the bell, because that way you'll be reminded to come back and see us next week. And how about sharing? Could you share the video? How good would that be to get the word of God out to people and let them find that you're creating, you know, 10, 15 minutes of journaling and creative time with God can really bring out a lot in our study time, in our friendship, in our relationship with our Father. So I hope that you've enjoyed this episode and don't forget to come back next week. I'll see you then. This is Tammy Becker. Bye. Bye.